Police reform is just one of the policy points Wisconsin U.S. Representative Mark Pocan has been pushing this week. Pocan also praises the historic U.S. Supreme Court decision that the 1964 Civil Rights Act does protect gay, lesbian, and transgender employees from discrimination based on sex, while saying there is more to be done. Representative Mark Pocan joined us earlier this week to talk about those issues. And thanks very much for being here. Yeah, thank you, Frederica. Glad to. Uh, first of all, I wanted to get your reaction to the U.S. Supreme Court ruling blocking the Trump administration from ending the deferred action for childhood arrivals. Yeah, it's been a, a good week for the Supreme Court on a few fronts. <laughs> and this is one of those where the president, unfortunately, was using a group of people to be uh, political leverage in, in his demand for a wall. And you never can use people like that, and the president, of course, did. And the Supreme Court uh, overruled that uh, ability for him to try to make people who've been here maybe since they were two weeks old, two months old, two years old, they may not speak the language of the country that they originally came from, and they were brought here at no fault of their own. And to say that you're going to deport people like that made no sense. And uh, you know, I think now the Supreme Court made sure that Donald Trump also understands that. Well, what does it mean uh, for people in Wisconsin? Well, it means, I think, that anyone who's a DACA recipient, of which there are many, um, yeah, I've had uh, interns in my office, I've had people we brought to the State of the Union who are DACA recipients, I mean, we've had others um, that are very active as frontline essential workers who are DACA recipients. It tells them that they don't have to worry about uh, some politician using their lives as political fodder. So I think it provides a sense of relief. But the real relief will happen when, you know, there's a new administration and a new approach towards uh, immigration. And uh, I know that uh, Joe Biden, for example, has said uh, on his first week in office, we'll make sure that uh, DACA recipients aren't used as political leverage. And I think uh, that's an important signal to people so they can live their lives. On police reform, uh, both the House and Senate have versions of bills that are expected to head to the floor uh, next week. What's your expectation that common ground on these can be found? Well, I would hope so. I mean, you know, I think uh, I've seen some polling this week that was really amazing and very heartening that the, the public get it. Uh, they understand that we've had racism that hasn't gone away. You know, all the, the rallies and, the, and the, the fights from the 60s, we should be much farther than we are. And here we are decades, decades later and uh, people really aren't created uh, or treated as equal uh, under the law in too many cases. So I think it's really important that uh, we uh, now, I'm sorry, I have a fly uh, going around me as we're talking there, um, but I think it's really important uh, that we have legislation that addresses things like uh, chokeholds and uh, no-knock warrants for drug cases, and that keeps track of the police officers who are causing problems, uh, that does all the things that we need to. That's in the House bill that we're going to be taking up uh, next Thursday. But some of those, I think, are also going to be in a Senate bill. At the end of the day, we'll have to compromise to a final bill. But um, public support is certainly there, and I think we need to rise to that. Uh, what's your reaction to the historic Supreme Court ruling this week that protects gay and transgender workers? You know, it's, an, it's another issue that I was very heartened to see. You know, you shouldn't be fired from your job simply for who you are or who you love. And that's what the Supreme Court said. The problem is, uh, in a majority of states, you could be fired uh, for who you love. You could lose your housing for who you love. And there's a lot of other ramifications when you don't have a law like Wisconsin had. We were the first state in the nation in 1982 to have a law protecting gays and lesbians, uh, but not transgendered at the time. It took seven more years for another state to have a law like that. But we still have a majority of states that don't have that in place. So them saying that in the Supreme Court protects people uh, on employment, but we have so much more to still do. And that's why we have the Equality Act in Congress. It passed the House with bipartisan support. Um, Mitch McConnell apparently has put it in the back of a truck and driven it to Kentucky and buried it in someone's backyard. It's not coming up. But uh, we can get that done, I think, with a different Senate and a different president. What would the Equality Act do? 
Uh, the Equality Act basically is a catch-all of everything that's not covered by marriage equality uh, under the law so that no matter where you live, what state in this nation, uh, you'd be treated the same. That includes discrimination in housing, employment, uh, a whole bunch of areas. It's a very comprehensive bill. Uh, and again, when we passed it in the House, we had bipartisan support. So the public is with us on the bill. It's just, you know, unfortunately, some political leaders still use this as a, a political leverage point. And again, I don't think you should ever use people as leverage. Uh, on COVID, uh, you're blasting President Trump for holding this uh, rally Saturday in, in Tulsa, uh, but also for having people who attend it sign liability waivers. But th the question might be, why shouldn't people get to make the choice whether to attend, first of all, and second of all, whether they're okay with signing this waiver? Well, I think it's irresponsible for anyone, especially the president, who knows should know better when it comes to COVID-19, that you can't have a rally in an area with increasing cases in an indoor arena with a thousand or more people. He's talking ten thousand people, uh, and you know it's so bad that you're asking them to sign a waiver so you can't sue you. Uh, everything about it stinks. And, uh, you know, he should have better sense. But by now, you know, we've seen Donald Trump doesn't have a lot of sense. So therefore, I'm saying through the, the Rallies Act uh, that if you try to do that in a condition with a community with 14 days or more of increasing cases, uh, which is how we measure this, uh, in an indoor facility with a thousand or more people, that you're not allowed to have some liability waiver to protect yourself because you're doing an event because you should have known better than to have that event uh, in the beginning. And I think a lot of local officials around the country where people are talking about these types of rallies don't want them because it's not in the best interest for the public uh, in those communities. The president can fly in and out. Any politician can do that. But the people in Tulsa or wherever else the rally is being held are going to live there with the consequences of those actions. All right. We need to leave it there. Representative Mark Pocan, thanks very much. Sure. Thank you.